Welcome to Draw Process, episode 99, almost 100 of these that I've done, where I draw a comic book page and process about my development and the techniques that I use. We're on page 39 of episode 2 today of First Sun and Sword. Per my usual, this is the day before the video comes out. I'm, I'm planning on getting ahead of the curve. I'm not yet. And I'm sick today, so I'm just barely able to do this. Uh, this morning, I didn't know that I would be available at all, uh, able to do it, um, feeling just a little too sick. But now it's noon, and I, I feel that I can handle it. I'm going to stop frequently for some coffee drinks just to keep my throat coated. Page 39, and we are in the fight still. So, um, I wanted Sword to fall down on this page. He's going to, we're going to get a shot of his feet again, but this time uh, somewhat, you know, I didn't do a great job of it, but I wanted to indicate that he was going to fall down. So I was thinking, do I, what camera angle do I use? Um, do I use some kind of energy lines to indicate the, that there's some, you know, pop in his ankle or do I just roll his ankle, roll his foot sideways? I was trying to figure that out in the first panel here. And, uh, and then I'm trying several different ways of drawing, uh, sword in this soldier fighting. Um, trying to, and I was thinking, you know, are they, is sword going to be all the way on the ground in this panel or falling or not falling until the next panel. There are so many decisions to be made about what to show in each panel and how many panels to take to show the action. Um, and I tend towards um, trying to indicate the action very well in the panel. So if I have two figures in combat like this and there's it's never so simple as one guy, you know, the guy points the spear at him or jabs it at him. It's, it's never that simple. I'm trying to capture a lot of what's going on between them in one shot. Um, so is he, is he falling backwards? How is his balance when he's on this ankle, when he's on this foot that's injured? Um, there's always layers to what's being shown and I want to capture it all in one shot that can be broken down into lots of little panels. You could take more panels to show it and just kind of show one thing per panel. Um, but that's not so much my interest, uh, as I've learned, I, I like to bring my characters to life with their acting because that's how I experience it as I visualize it, as I, as I construct them, and sort of feel it in my body kind of sometimes as I'm sitting there, I'm kind of posing. Sometimes I even stand up from the drawing table and try like a little bit of posing of, of how, and I'm not even taking photos of myself. I'm just, I'm just getting a feel for it with my body. And I'm thinking about how that would look if I drew it. You'll see that I had sword on the ground already. It's it's very scribble, you know. It's hard to tell, but I have him on the ground already with a pretty low horizon, uh, with a low camera pointing up, so that we get uh, the buildings, kind of uh, in the sky, looking good, working with with the action. A big moment here. Uh, so sword is down on the ground. Uh, the soldier is is about to take him out, and son is going to jump in the way. He's going to jump in and hit this guy or shove him really hard. Uh, son is very very strong. We've seen that before, but he's he's timid. He's afraid. He has anxiety. He's He's not sure of himself. He doesn't know how to fight. You know, he doesn't know what to do, where to hit people. He has a lot of agility, athleticism, but he doesn't really know how to use it. Um, 
And that's what will help him not be too powerful, considering how strong he is. Um, uh, so, so I'm trying to figure out how to capture that in these last few panels, and I'm going to go with a really large panel of Sun hitting the guy. The moment of impact, with the guy already starting to collapse under the blow a little bit. And in the next panel, I'll have him in the end position. So here he's, he's the moment of impact. I didn't show any lead up. I'm not showing Sun prepare to hit him uh, or getting close to hitting him. I just, I wanted it to feel like Sun appeared out of nowhere and just hit him. And so I don't want to show a bunch of panels uh, leading up to that because that slows down the sense of time. It makes it seem like it's taking longer. I want a, a big impact, a uh, big panel, and, and I want clear focus on the impact in this panel. So these scribbles indicate sun on the left, punching the guy in the arm or ribs. Um, and there's a, I'm going to try to get um, the, the impact in the center of the panel and then the, the shape of, of the two figures uh, leading towards the next panel. And then that last panel is, is the end result. The, the soldier that got hit in the arm has rolled away. He, he flew off uh, away from everyone else, and he's laying there with a broken arm. As I was saying here, just how much, um, just how much to roll the ankle. I don't want it to look like he broke his ankle. I just want it to be clear that he's going to have a hard time maneuvering because he's not using his toes. He's, as he's fighting, he's standing on his heel the whole time with his back foot because he can't put weight on the, the ball of his foot from the injury there. So, uh, you know, I, that's one of the things I was trying to work out. How awkward would that be to to try to keep that from from touching? Uh, and so here you can see his lead foot has stepped back. His right foot has stepped back because he's try he's got to move out of the way. He's got to move in the fight, um, but his left foot is lagging. It's not moving the way it should. And so this is how he ends up on the ground. And of course he's got you know a fever and he's. Uh, disoriented, so he's not at his best anyways. When I draw these buildings, I reference the prior pages where I drew little pieces of these buildings already. And I reference other buildings from other angles that I drew and just creating a little bit of consistency in the style of the buildings and stuff. When I draw, you know, this figure here, it kind of looks like magic. You know, it's it's sped up, of course, but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm posing him pretty well, pretty quickly constructing the figure. But the very light pencil underneath is my guide. I've got I've got some clear gesture, a little bit of structure outlined that I'm drawing on top of now with a heavier pencil. When I'm at that kind of gesture, rough stage, uh, you'll you can see here where, you know, I'm I'm framing everything very intentionally. The other soldiers are shorter than him, so that he definitely is imposing. The guy with the spear is imposing, but the other guys behind him, his comrades, they're, you know, they're they're shorter in the panel, and they're kind of just framing the back, the buildings grow up at an angle helping open up the sky for the silhouette of this this lead figure and those buildings grow out towards you know the towards the foreground the same way that this figure is moving forward in that same kind of energy that same angle and uh now this is kind of a, a funny moment the, of drawing wise. I've got to, 
uh, I've got this circular uh, stonework on the ground around the well. And I have to draw that in perspective where the stones are getting smaller as they go back, but they're not flat. They're curved and they're, they're, they're going out from a central point of the circle. And that is a weird combination of, of vanishing points and axes and stuff. So, um, so I fake it a bit. It's not perfect. And, and that's good enough for me. I'm learning what I'm comfortable with. I think I've been moving more in, let's say, like a Jack Kirby kind of direction. The art doesn't look like that, um, like his style, uh, so much. But um, the way that his backgrounds and figures are um, like pretty abstracted and simple and repetitive, certain elements of the outfits or the backgrounds and stuff are repetitive. Uh, it's it's really like a cartooning, abstracting from things, uh, style. And, and I've been doing that and like, it's getting more and more clear that I'm, I'm throwing out some of the same kind of like background building elements, the same kind of, you know, figures, uh, and designs and stuff. And, uh, that's okay. You know, like over time I want to increase the variety of what I'm doing, but at the same time, uh, it doesn't have to be astoundingly ornate and unique in the design. Uh, I've got a story to tell. Uh, it's not the same thing as um, if I was hired to 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 design a sci-fi or fantasy world for a, a movie franchise or something. Uh, then that's my job. I can spend all my time researching and designing and building uh, a unique world. But that's not the job here. You know, this this job, uh, sure, it's nice to do some of that, but that's that's not the, the job description. I need to be cartooning, telling the story with my figures, and I need to draw it from imagination. For me, that's what it, the job description is, because I want to I wanna have a high output of story. The point for me is to be a storyteller. This was an awkward um, camera angle and stuff that I was trying to capture. Uh, you know, being uh, sun kind of coming from behind, not not just from the left here, but kind of from behind, kind of punching the guy forward, but also to the right. And, you know, just how much can I do that? Um, and how much can I show the, the, the soldier, like, falling, being thrown by the punch? Uh, off set off balance like how, how far to go with those things not a lot of words in these scenes but here we have a nice big balloon uh with sun letting out a nice yeah i draw those into my uh panels into the page ink them on the page but then i do the lettering uh digitally someday i might do traditional lettering um, i've been considering it So here, um, you know, one, one reason the camera is where it's positioned, that the horizon line is where I've positioned it, is the ground in between the buildings down that street is nice and open. It creates an open negative space that sun and the punch are silhouetted on. I was trying to capture an angle where uh, the stone of the, of the ground that they're on starts below the fist punching the guy and the buildings do not land in a way that cut into and confuse the outline of sun especially sun and the punch um that's all that's all something i'm i'm considering as i construct that And now we're moving to a nice establishing uh, shot where the so soldier has rolled away a good distance just to show just how much power that punch had. And it's and it's a pause in the action where everyone's mouth, you know, jaw drops open. They can't believe they just saw that happen. They, you know, um, so I wanted a nice uh, an angle, a camera angle that allows for enough um 
enough depth, like uh, the horizon line has to be high enough that we see a the distance between sun and the man that rolled away. If the horizon was lower, then uh, you could tell in a sense because the soldier would be a lot larger than sun in perspective, but you wouldn't be able to see the distance between them which just doesn't give you as much of a sense of what just happened as clear of a view. And so I've gone with a higher horizon line for that reason so that we can see the space of things, but I'm still trying to, you know, set this up. Well, sun is pretty center and to the left. He's like maybe, you know, a little bit towards the top left third, but uh, and there's sort of a diagonal or a straight, somewhat straight down, but a, diag a diagonal from him to the soldier. And I laid the spear on the ground between them, kind of accentuating that line between them. Um, and I've got sword on one side, the soldiers on the other. I'm trying to set this up where uh, it's a nice composition and it's a really clear um, what it's about. This is not simply an establishing shot, um, just so that you, so that I throw one in. Like this is showing you uh, Sun and the guy he hit, the aftermath of that. the uh, The buildings are a little bit, you know, the camera angles and stuff. It's a little bit challenging sometimes because uh, this is in an intersection. There's, there's the street goes off in four different ways, you know, in a, in a T. So, uh, depending on the angle, I'm going to have to draw down two different roads or something like that. And so I'm trying to choose, ang I'm trying to fake the angles or choose angles so that I don't have to draw, you know, both sides of a street or down both lanes. There's a little bit of, uh, I keep in mind that this city is on a hill, uh, because it goes down towards the coast. It goes down somewhat downhill towards the coast. Um, so even though they've reached a pretty flat spot, um, which was intentional because the cart had slowed down, uh, going off there behind in that last panel, it goes off, uh, there's, there's a, a downhill to the street. So, uh, the horizon line, the vanishing point that the buildings go to is above the street level in the distance. Yeah. Well, I've been sick, of course, uh, a little under the weather for like a week. And then it kind of hit me today and, uh, working a lot and trying different things to keep the family afloat and everything. And, um, it has been a wild ride. Like I got a big, I got big changes coming and, uh, moving offices and having to furnish an office. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's just, it makes it hard to focus on art. Uh, when I sit down to draw a page lately, um, I'm, I'm less concerned about how it looks. I'm just drawing freely. Even, even here on this page, which was a few weeks ago, I think, uh, that I drew it. I, uh, cause I'm, I'm a little ahead of this now, but, uh, even here, like, uh, I'm just drawing what we need to see. I'm just kind of, I'm not thinking too much about it. If there needs to be a shadow here, I just scribble it in there. You need some toes or whatever, draw those there. And, um, it's odd because I think it's helping the work. I think it's for the best that I have, uh, that, that I approach it this way. I think it's been good to just let go and draw more loosely, even though it's, I'm doing that partly because I care less, right? Like I have less energy to focus on it. I, I just, when I sit down, it's time to focus. It's time to just do it. And, um, and then get back to other things when it's done. Um, so that's, that's the phase I'm in right now, which, um, 
is okay. There's a time to do more studying, more focused, like development oriented stuff. Um, but it's okay to like put on the cruise control sometimes. Uh, and that's what it's been kind of like. Um, and, and it doesn't mean I've stopped developing. It's, it's resulting in some interesting results. It's sort of showing me things about my natural order that I'll keep in mind as I continue to develop. I can keep in mind what, what's natural to me. Uh, you know, you could, you could do the same thing. You could, what does it look like when you just draw freely and you're not worried about the proportions and the anatomy and stuff and or even inking or whatever, if you, every step of the process, if you just do it like those, uh, 24 hour comic challenges or something, when you do things like that, what seems to be your natural inclination? How do you go about doing those things, indicating those things? Is there anything good there that you can adapt and keep, uh, as you develop sort of developing intentionally towards what is good for you, what incorporates your natural tendencies. Um, so that's what I'm talking about. I need to do that uh, during this time, is see what, what's worth incorporating and, and growing in. Um And, uh, and yeah, I do reflect on it. I look at the results here and I look at prior earlier work and I think, you know, I, I like it. I like overall, I like, uh, that this more free drawing style is, is, uh, it's got a certain quality to it. That's, uh, expressive, energetic, um, relaxed. It, it brings something to the table. And ultimately I like that I, I can, complete pages in a timely fashion. That's, that's the important thing to me is to tell a story in a timely fashion, like be able to do it. Um, I think the length of time it takes me to draw pages has gone up a little bit lately. Um, I think it's because, uh, I just, I'm, I'm kind of doing what feels natural. I'm kind of going with the flow. Maybe there's a little less cognitive, you know, mental energy that can go into simplifying things, um, to save time, maybe a bit of that, but I think mostly it is in the inking phase, uh, because there's so many more lines that I put down in the inking, it's taking a little longer to ink. It used to take less time than penciling. And now I think it's the same. It's like about the same length of time between penciling and inking. Um, so I think that's uh, why I've slowed down a bit. It still is probably like three and a half to four and a half hours per page, which is still really good in my opinion. Um, and, and, uh, yeah, I don't really mind that it takes more, uh, a little more time to, to get it done. Um, but also with this approach, I'm, I never really make a mistake because it's more organic and kind of sketched in sketchy rough. Um, I, there's never something that I just need white out for. So like so far for several pages when my style was much more uh, simple, clear lines, you know, less lines. Uh, if there was an error, it was like a big deal. Uh, if there's, um, a line on a face or something that's just not quite right. I, I need to erase it and redo it because it's the only line there to indicate what I need to indicate. That's not the case now because I will just add some more lines or add weight to the lines. If the lines aren't, if they just need more weight added to separate shapes and I just do it. Um, whereas before I didn't have that option really because I was, um, following a, a, a rigid, you know, set of rules. Like I would only use one size pin and I wouldn't double up lines unless, uh, they were truly doubled like side by side. Um, so I don't have to, uh, correct things as much. And, uh, I've been, I've been letting myself 
ink outside the panel borders because I know that I can just go in digitally and erase that. It seems like it's been a kind of a waste of energy to try to keep my lines neatly within the borders. I might as well let them go past the edge and then just take them out digitally. Ah. Yeah, things have been good. Uh, though things aren't bad. There's good things happening. I, um... Yeah, we'll see where it leads. Lately, I, I don't know. I've been interested in educating and, and mentoring other people more than I used to. Uh, I think, I don't know, maybe there, maybe that relates to doing more counseling lately and less uh, of my own art, but I'm more interested in, in helping others than, uh, than just doing my own thing. Like, I, I don't feel like it gets in the way of, you know, getting my projects done or my goals done. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on, you know, somewhat on autopilot. Like I have a clear schedule for what I do with my stuff and it fits in my life and I'll just keep doing that. But with my other energy, it's, it's nice to be social. It's nice to help others, engage with others. Um, and so, yeah, we're, we're looking at doing, uh, well, I'm planning on doing even more of that at Clever Kaiju. And uh, that's, you know, I don't know, maybe it's finding a better balance in life, too. You know, it's not just about completing the work, but having uh, having an influence, having a social life and things like that. Doing things with others and not just in a bubble. Uh, yeah, life is getting uh, more balanced. It's getting better. It's about time. I'm going on 40 years old. Uh, so uh, it's not not bad. Not a bad time to get some things uh, balanced and, and set up correctly, taking care of myself correctly, and so on. Remember that I go in with the brush pen and add even more blacks after this. But you'll notice that I'm adding blacks enough to you know, I'm, I'm adding quite a bit at this stage because I want to separate the shapes. I want to, you know, create the contrast. Uh, but I'll go in with more in the end. Just adding a little more. Um, I plan on doing some uh, ink wash work for, uh, for some illustrations, not really for the comic, but... Um, I might someday uh, throw them in the comic, or at least on covers. I've had some uh, success with that before. I I kind of like working that way to some degree. Uh, but I haven't done it since I've gone to this inking style, which has a lot of uh, cross-hatching and lines to it. It's kind of, uh, it makes me wonder if you add the ink wash, if it's somewhat unhelpful. Because this has a lot of a lot of just using black and white, it creates a lot of contrast and stuff. So we'll see um, what I can come up with for that. But I have a series of illustrations to complete for an art book uh, that I'll be a part of, um, and I think I want to you know explore that with with that, that series. There is still no cover for this book. Uh, I think I will wait until closer to the end. Um, the cover just like needs to capture the. It, I like it to go with the prior cover to some degree, like style wise, uh, color wise, but I want to capture the the story. If, to me, I just like to do it last. It would be like you complete the film, you know, first, and then you make the movie poster. You don't do it in the other order. Yeah. 
you'll see here how I build the stone ground or any of these textures or details that need to be added. I add a little at a time moving around the page. Um, now the four, the most foreground elements are not always the most detailed because it's more like, uh, there's a certain, uh, midpoint. There's a certain focus depth that is going to have the most detail and things further back from the eye. Obviously you, I start taking away lines uh, using less to indicate those stones. I'm not drawing every single stone in the street. Also, if I was drawing every single stone in the street, I would have to be, I would probably need to be even more careful about my perspective on this circle <laughs> of stones because uh, by drawing them so rigidly, so clearly, it would be obvious like when they're wrong. Um, but that's not how I've been doing it here. Uh, so it's less, less obvious. Um, but at that kind of focal length, that particular depth that's the focus, that's where there's probably a little more lines in detail, um, sometimes rather than in the most foreground element. Um, I rarely completely create the stones, the bricks, whatever it is. I usually don't complete them fully. I like to leave the lines open. Um, that's that, I mean, that's kind of like the idea of you're not drawing you're not drawing things and when you draw a page you're, you're implying things and that even includes you know faces or whatever there's no lines in nature um, the lines you choose to convey things are choices you're making to abstract from reality and that uh, is something you should embrace and, and move forward with uh, So when I'm in, I guess it's even like a shift in thinking. I'm not simply like, well, I'm just going to leave broken lines. I'm, I'm not going to draw every stone and it's full outline. I'm going to leave gaps and openings in that because broken lines look more attractive. It's not, that's one way of putting it. I think it, it would be worth wording it even differently to shift your mindset, which is there's no stones there. I just need some lines to indicate, to imply stones in the first place. It's not like the default is drawing every stone. The default might be drawing nothing there. Blank paper. Uh, so how much do I want to imply? It needs to be enough. Uh, that my figures are in a, and they appear to be in space. I'm curious when I get back to uh, an indoor space, especially a, a very dark space. Uh, I'm interested to see how I will handle that now that I'm inking with more of the the hatching, more open lines instead of solid blacks. Even on my figures, there's less areas that are solid black. They're, they're kind of opened up some. Uh, so if I had figures in a, a really dark dungeon or something, then uh, how, how do I want to do that? Do I want to go solid blacks? Uh, like silhouetting people on, on things and so on? Um... Uh, I'm curious how I will uh, adapt to that since the amount of blacks I use is, is down. And here the black shadow on the ground by sword's foot. This is simply there to help bring the eye up towards the, the soldier on the next panel. It just adds weight to the bottom of the panel and it helps keep your eye up above that line and moving that direction. And the shadows here on the ground are positioned where they are. Like technically they could have been further back behind his leg, but I positioned them there to add weight to the bottom of the panel. And 
And that is it. There were eight soldiers, now there's seven. <laughs> and we're going to see Sun get in an all out crazy fight with seven guys now, um, which is going to be. Uh, going to be interesting to choreograph, let's say. Uh, okay, that's it for this week. I survived with only having to cough like five times maybe. So, uh, but that's it. Keep being the practice of your art. Find others doing the same. See you next week.